Howdy, buckaroos. This your old pal Gabby Hayes coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir, -y, Bob. Hey, did any of you buckaroos ever do any mountain climbing? Hmm? I did. A lot of fun, too. You know, that kind of reminds me of an old uncle of mine. Mountain Goat Hayes, he was known as. Greatest mountain climber the world has ever known. Human or otherwise. Why, he climbed ever big mountain in the whole world. Most of them backwards. Standing on his hands, too. Yeah, that's how good he was. Well, he finally run out of mountains. So he decided he's going to build his own. He hired, oh, 15, 20,000 men, and he told them that he wanted them to build a mountain 100,000 feet high. So he went away and left them. Well, that's where he made his mistake, because they didn't do as he told them to do. Instead of building a mountain 100,000 feet high, they built 100,000 mountains one foot high each turned out to be the first ant hills the world has ever known. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, our story today is about a gang of outlaws who was just about to take over a stagecoach line when Billy Carson showed up. And don't be all day about it. This is all the money I have. Never mind the money. You're coming with us. The boss has got an idea. You can be a big help to us. Come out of there, and I'll come in after you. And I won't be gentle. Looks like the boys changed their minds. I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you. Don't bother about that. It wasn't any trouble. I was coming this way anyway. That fellow over there won't bother you anymore, miss. Well, I got the driver. Give me a hand. We'll put him inside. Steve won't be very happy about the way this turned out. I never did like any part of it. I don't mind mustering cattle and holding up stages. But when it comes to grabbing women, it's bad business. It's too much like sticking your fist into a hornet's nest. Ah, uh, you're paid to do what you're told, not what you like. Yeah, and we're the ones that stretch his rope that backfires. Hello, Jed. Stage is a little late, isn't it? Yes, and I'm worried on account of all the holdups we've had lately. 
Linda's been visiting her Aunt Martha. She was coming home on today's stage. Well, you've got a right to feel uneasy. Why don't you get rid of all that worry and send out to me? I'll gamble on beating that gang of outlaws. Well, let's not go into that anymore. I told you flatly, I'm not selling out. Some of those mines back in the hills are looking pretty good. And if this country should have a boom, my franchise will be worth a fortune. If you go broke in the meantime, why... That's a chance I'll take. Something's wrong. It's a stranger driving. Somebody get the sheriff. Got a couple of dead men inside. Dad, we were held up. Mr. Carson saved me from being a prisoner. Mister, you've made a friend for life. That wasn't much of a job. And the bad men you got around here don't seem to relish gun smoke very much. Let's go into the office until the sheriff gets here. I sure feel sorry for Tim, the driver. He was a good man. Everyone liked him. Yeah, it's tough. Tell me, have you had much of this trouble? Too much. Outlaws are making it almost impossible for me to operate. They're too smart for the sheriff. That one you brought in is the first one to be knocked over. From what I saw of Mr. Carson in action, I'd say he'd be very discouraging to the outlaws if he was working for the express company. See, that's a good idea. How about it? No, thanks. I don't like tying myself down to any one job. My feet get itchy. You're not afraid to take the job, are you? No, miss, I don't think so. But you know, making a business chasing outlaws is the best way I know of to keep from growing old. <laughs> I'd be glad to have you take the job. Of course, it's your own business, whether you do or not. But I'm still in your debt for what you've already done. Well, whoever wanted that stage line didn't get it that time, but Carson figured they'd try again. So he decided on two things. One was to stick around Jet Bowen. Another one was to plant an old friend with a gang of outlaws. Hello, Miss Bowen. Why, hello, Mr. Kirby. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing at all. I thought maybe I might be able to do something for you. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. Your daddy is being pig-headed and refusing to sell. Everybody can see that he's going broke. He has a right to do what he pleases with his own business. Well, of course, every man has a right to be foolish if he wants to be. And I thought maybe if you persuade him to sell out, why, he might be able to save something out of the wreck. I'm willing to gamble that I can make a go of this business. How come you're so big-hearted, Mr. Kirby? Seldom find anyone so anxious to pick up a hot potato. Why don't you mind your own business and get out of here? I don't like to be shoved around, mister. I came in here feeling friendly, and he started shoving me around. You came in here shooting off your face about something that wasn't your business. Can't you take a joke? I can take a joke, all right. But you won't like the way I hand it back to you. <laughs> I can't understand why he flies off the handle so easy. It looked to me as if you were trying to start a fight. And I'll thank you to have no more brawls in here. I, I had no quarrel with him. Why should I start a fight? Just plain cussedness, maybe? I don't know. I'm not interested in your reason. <laughs> you can't figure them out. I'm her dad, and she's got me going around in circles half the time. I guess having a girl around all the time would be quite disturbing to a man's peace of mind. Uh, Mr. Bowen, I heard talk there's an organized gang trying to wreck the express company. Why? 
Well, so that they can gather up the pieces, put them back together again. Say, that would make sense. The Aztec mine payroll is coming through in a day or so. If they get that, I'm finished. I've made up my mind to deal myself in, if you don't mind. Mine? I'll be mighty glad to have you. How about you? You'll be along any minute. We got no time to be picking wildflowers. Uh, I, I, I was just kind of fixing the lay of the land in my mind. <laughs> Never mind about that. We'll see that you don't get lost. Yeah, there might come a time when you won't be around here. Come on, let's get going. Yeah, let's get going. Uh, yeah, here, this way. Come on, yeah, yeah, sure. The smoothest job I ever saw, bar none. Uh, I suppose they recognized me and figured it was no use to put up a fight. <laughs> hey, pass her up here. I'll take care of her. Oh, we won't bother to lug that box around. I got a better idea. We've been robbed. <laughs> hey, if that's your idea of a big proposition, I've been wasting my time. I can get that stuff in any hardware store. Take it on in, Hank. And remember, don't talk. Let him guess what happened. Maybe the boss of that outfit will tip his hand. We'll be careful. Eat up! Well, I reckon Billy was pretty good at guessing what Steve Kirby and his gang of outlaws' plan would be. But he never guessed how rough they really was fixing to be. What's the matter? Looks like we've hit the jackpot. You 
can be a big help to us in a business deal. Why should I help you in a business deal? Because I say so. Your voice sounds familiar. You were one of the men that held up the stage. Maybe I was, and maybe I wasn't. But what I say still goes. You're coming with us. You must be crazy if you think you can get away with this. Let me worry about that. You just keep quiet and do as you're told. Now, the first thing we've got to do is find a way to tie Steve Kirby in with that gang before we crack down on him. Can't leave her there, Fuzz. I thought I was going to get out of here with a whole skin, but my luck's petered out on me. Would you like to climb on your horse and hightail it out of here? Yes, but I ain't going to do it. Good. Let's go back to work. Where's that tin horn imitation of a bad man? You mean Matt Brawley? There's the real Matt Brawley. Did he play us for suckers? That won't make no difference in a little while. Where is he? Well, upstairs, I suppose. He didn't come down through here. Show him to me. What did you bring me here for? We got an idea we'd like to go into the express business, and you could persuade your father to deed the place over to us. He'll never do that. He might, if he gets worried enough about you. Now go on upstairs. We'll see that you stay nice and cozy. Find him, he's gone. That's not so good. You're telling me. Well, keep searching for him. You come with me, Joe. Get in there. With that fellow on the loose, he might do some talking. What won't do us no good. And with her on her hands, this place ain't safe no more. I say we better get out. Well, maybe so, but we better make sure first that we can't find him. He might still be hanging around here somewhere. Sit down. We'll make sure that you don't do any disappearing act. Now, you remember what I told you. Yeah. And them may be your last words. They're, they're mine. I... me when I rode up and crawled in a hole someplace.
like he got away. We'd better go back to the roost and move out. Just in time, Fuzz. Nice work. Hey, you didn't do so bad yourself. Uh, hey, come out around the corner. I got something I want to show you. All oh, right, get, move out. Hey, get me out of here. Hey, somebody. Hey, get me out of here. Cut me down. <laughs> he don't look so tough from this angle. Cut me down out of here. All right, I'll cut you down. Well, that Billy Carson was a pretty brave feller, wasn't he, huh? Yes, sir. Had a lot of nerve, that feller. You know, he can remind me of an old uncle of mine. Lion-hearted Hayes, he was no doubt. Now, there was the bravest man that ever walked on this earth. He wasn't afraid of anything. He used to have a bunch of tigers in the cage. He just went in there just to play with them, you know, just like he played with kittens. Well, one day down in Texas, he was out plowing his fields, you know, and he heard a war hoop, and he looked up, and there coming at him was about 400 wild Indians. He didn't have a gun. He didn't have nothing to protect himself with, but he was a quick thinker. He hollered, get up them horses and they just tore through the, he was hanging onto that plow you know just went through them engines and knocked them galley west both directions kept right on a going well sir you know that hole that he dug in the ground is right down there in texas to this very day they call it the rio grand river yes sir by cracky well i reckon that's just about all for today buckaroos well, I'll be back next week with another ripper and western yarn. <laughs> You're dirt tootin'. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs>